You're listening to Vancouver Co-op Radio, CFR 100.5 FM. We're here on the unceded traditional territory of the Salish, Musqueam, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations. This is Bernadine Fox, here with my co-host for the week, Glenn Gregg, bringing you Both Sides Now. When I'm weary and so tired When I'm worn out and done When I fall off the wire again No more strength to get back on There you are with that voice in my ear Saying the words that I need to hear it's A few days back, I got to chat with Thomas McKechnie, who was in Vancouver, B.C. for the Pride Provocateurs performing his Four and a Half Ignoble Truths, a play which he describes as a metaphor for his depression. After Glenn and I sat down and chatted about depression, what is it, what's happening in our brains when we become depressed and what we can do about it? So clear your schedule for 30 minutes and hang tight. We'll be right back with our conversation with Thomas McKechnie just before he went on to perform his sold-out theatrical performance of Four and a Half Ignoble Truths. Join us every Monday from 2.30 to 4 p.m. for She Boom. Open your ears to the sound of the latest and greatest women in music. Our show focuses entirely on female artists from a local to global perspective. Every Monday from 2.30 to 4 p.m., tune in to She Boom on CFRO 100.5 FM Co-op Radio. We're here with Thomas McKechnie, playwright and actor of Four and a Half Ignoble Truths. We're, we're talking to you about depression, and mostly because Four and a Half Ignoble Truths is about depression. Mm. Um, so, and this is something that you experience in your life. Mm. And I'm wondering if you could tell folks what took you to treatment, what made you go to treatment. Mm-hmm. Um, when I first, the first time I sort of uh, sought out help, um, was because I was about to enter theater school and felt no joy about that, no mm. anticipation, no excitement. Um, and I was noticing that as a trend in a lot of the things in my life. Relationships with um, partners or with friends seemed uh, hollow and empty. And I was thinking that, like, I either need to be on a different track and be with different people, or I need to, or there's something else going on. And what, what else was going on turned out to be... Uh, Depression. Mm -hmm. So here you were about to start something that you felt was really important to you, but you couldn't find any joy in it. Mm -hmm. That would be disconcerting. It could Mm -hmm. also make might might make you feel like you were making the wrong choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And that's and that's true for whether it's um, going to school or being involved in a relationship or something like that. It was it was that sort of doubt and that fear that I was doing the wrong thing or that I was in the wrong place, and that's why I wasn't feeling anything. Mm -hmm. It was quite strong and quite present. It sounds like, from what you're describing, is it wasn't something extreme. It wasn't like you were throwing yourself off the bridge. It mm. was it was much more subtle than mm-hmm. that as well. So was that true your whole life, or was this just something that came on? Was it something you could remember before mm-hmm. that you felt joy and now you didn't? Or mm-hmm. Yeah, that was definitely a transition that I noticed, and it was a transition that my mother had noticed where I was sort of talking to her about how I was doing, and... She was noting that she had seen change over the last couple of years. Like mm-hmm. many people, mm-hmm. the sort of struggles with mental health, be- the health began around adolescence. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, um, yeah, that was the strongest um, sort of uh, effect of the mm-hmm. depression, was a sort of n- total total numbing, and uh, the, the technical term is anhedonia. Hmm. Um, I've never heard that. Uh, from the Greek an, without, mm-hmm. and hedone, pleasure. Oh. Um, it's sort of... Uh, um, and that was sort of the strongest um, side effect that I was noticing, or the strongest effect or strongest symptom I was noticing. Right. Yeah. You have uh, created this play called Four and a Half Ignoble Truths. Um, where, and this came out of your depression. You're mm-hmm. quite clear about that. Can you talk about um, the, the importance of creating this play? What, what does this serve for you? How does it work for you to mm-hmm. have made this play? Well, I've had the good fortune of encountering like uh, media, mostly books or novels, that have helped give me a language to articulate my depression, to sort of understand its contours and to describe it to the people I'm talking to. Right. Um, and uh, I was challenged by my mentor to write something uh, personal. Uh, and so I sort of started delving into 
um, my relationship to my mental illness. Um, part of my biggest struggle with it is that there is um, uh, a limiting and a sort of um, uh, silencing that can come along with mental illness where you um, can't find words to express what's going on inside of you yes. and so it becomes impossible to seek help or seek care from um, you know even the closest people to you much less some right. stranger in a lab coat yeah it's really hard to share what you're going through if you don't have the language to do it and mm -hmm. in some cases there isn't language so mm -hmm. do you find that having done the theater piece that what you put on the stage which is words and images because mm -hmm. you are there do you have music as well mm -hmm. i haven't seen the play i'm mm -hmm. looking forward to seeing it mm -hmm. um so you've created this language through that uh that's um uh yeah, I'd say some of both. Mm -hmm. um, I've used um, sort of poetic or hi, sort of high rhetorical language to try to give um, form past the quotidian to sort of some of the things I'm talking about. And then there's also a lot of um, uh, uh, images within it of like, um, I, I sort of put myself through the ringer doing this show and drown myself in a bucket and f f stand up and fall down over and over and things wow. like this. And with the intent of like, allowing a real body and space to to sort of um, become a metaphor for some of the, this experience mm -hmm. and so that it can sort of be understood this this, this person that um, an audience is witnessing this real live person in front of them who's trying to communicate something to right them. and you have a talk back part mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and how how what's the response that you get in that talk back part um, but yeah lots of questions about like um, the sort of practical stuff of survival and then um, uh, questions about like sort of my journey with the play and my journey um, with mental health. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't, you know, I'm a reasonably young man so I haven't been on the journey that long but right. I feel like I've, um, I, I know the difference between myself five or ten years ago and myself now right. um, and I know that there is like, um, I can hold up my life as, the, as, as proof that there is um, Change. Regardless of how, yeah, change, change is possible. Change and I don't, know, we don't know anything about like um, uh, permanency. Like um, I'm always sort of waiting, sort of feeling at the edges of my feelings, being like, oh, okay, is this where we go back down? Is this mm -hmm. where is this the? But it's like it is, it is ups and it's downs, and that's okay. That's how life works. And that's the reality of depression. Even if you're on medication, mm -hmm. it, it medication something. can work for a period of time and then not work, and you have to adjust it or change it or mm -hmm. move on to something else. And or you might be okay to handle like like a combination of medication and therapy and exercise and all the things that we sort of do right. f do for our health might be good enough to sort of keep you going so long as everything's right. pretty normal but you lose a parent or a friend or yeah. something like this and so there's lots of things that happen that we can kind of surmise that can happen when you're depressed that um get in the way mm -hmm. of life um but you've talked a little bit uh, about how depression actually has given you something in terms mm -hmm. of being able to write, and I was hoping that you could talk a little bit about that, mm -hmm. how it works for you as opposed to impedes you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the tension between the two of them that's interesting. There's a real, um, like, I think that the depression, my depression has given me um, a depth of feeling, which is, uh, which helps build things like empathy and compassion and understanding which are essential not just for being a person not just for being an artist but for just being a person in the world mm -hmm. these are very useful things um, and w the depression also can you know trap me in my bed for hours or days at a time and right. um, keep me in such a fog that I'm unable to create right. and so it's the tension between them and when we're at a sort of healthy part in the middle where I have access to a broad range of feeling but don't uh, but I'm not uh, sort of crushed underneath of it. Right. And when you're play, when you're writing, and you're writing scenes. I mean, I, I have done a bit of writing. It does require you to kind of push yourself in mm. different ways. And I'm 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 wondering, um, in terms of uh, being able to write, say, a broad range of material does that give you that flexibility or because I think that if you're somebody that um, has had a fairly easy life mm -hmm. I don't know what that looks like but <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know that where you know you've had two parents and you know you didn't go through a lot of trauma as a child and you didn't have any mental health issues you your range of what you can 
uh, recognize mm-hmm. and, and have lived through is, is kind of narrow as opposed to somebody who's experienced a much broader range of things. And I would imagine mm-hmm. that depression is one of those things that mm-hmm. gives you more depth mm-hmm. to draw from. Well, it was interesting because when I wrote the, um, when I wrote the draft of the play that I am touring now, um, I was in the midst of a, uh, just a hurricane depression. Um, I was, um, I had recently got off, um, uh, been sort of laid up from work with a knee injury, and so I wasn't exercising anymore, and I was very short on money, and I was just like right down in the in the trenches with this play, and um, right. uh, quite, quite depressed. Um, and so the work was very much just attempting to transcribe the sort of physical sensation of moment to moment uh, being alive wow. onto the page. And so, like for that example, that it's like yes, it's it's very the the line between experience and uh, aesthetic object is very short, um, mm-hmm. which is very handy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, 